Hello and welcome back to Joypads for Goalposts. Today we have something a little bit different again. We looked at the Steam Deck. Today we are looking at the SUP handheld game 2. 501 console. As you can see it looks a little bit like a Game Boy. This is Mario from Smash Brothers. Mario riding a Yoshi. Mario playing a bit of Tadis. This is what it kind of looks like. Uh, you will not be playing a game that looks anything like this, which I think is Crash Team Racing. Shows you that there's a front and a back. Um, so yeah, so we're going to take a look at this. It is a digital game system with a 3-inch L wide LCD. The console is slim, portable and trendy. Digital multi-service device that you can play on a TV. And the backlit function of the screen allows players can play anywhere. So we picked up the black one. Oh yeah, it also comes with a gamepad. Important to know. Before we look at the device itself, what comes with it? The world's shortest shortest uh, USB micro. Tidy. Levy out cable, of course. This is a very small, clear gamepad. Uh, which oddly has like gaps, like it should have shoulder buttons here, but doesn't. And plugs in via the USB. And an instruction manual, which kind of tells you about the key, the buttons, front and back. How to connect it to the TV. And here is the console itself. So yeah, so SUP have been making these for a long time. Um, previously it was a 400 in one console um, started to look like the Game Boy um, and now this is the SUP 2 um, so yeah, we went for the black model so the differences with this one are buttons on the back buttons on the back so a lot of the new vertical handhelds like this like the analog pocket and stuff and the amber neck Emulation devices have come with these buttons um, because a lot of them can emulate like PS1 games and stuff or it's useful for Super Nintendo. Um, don't actually think there's any Super Nintendo games on this one. Uh, so this might be a bit of a waste. Um, it is interesting on the back of the box it actually says so we've got the what would be the select button on the front is actually the volume button and it does say V up down start button reset direction pad so this is an R button uh, this is an R button this is an R button but then L is L and select a little bit interesting a bit different um, but so it's got this ribbing like how the original Game Boy had it has got Typical foam battery that things all these devices seem to have, so you could um, expand it if you wanted to. It is a, a 10 20 milliamp battery, but yeah, you can easily pick up these, they're like old foam batteries pretty easily. Um, overall, oh, sorry, we're going around. Uh, there's a USB, the AV out, which is also a headphone socket, and on off switch there. Um, there's no uh, nothing on any of the sides because your volume button is this select button here um, And then yeah, and just some screws on the back I guess and one thing you will notice as well The uh, screen is not set in the middle of this black overlay. So it kind of just looks a little bit uh, wonky um, But yeah, we're gonna fire up the buttons the d-pad in these little weird recess things, I guess to make it, it's just to make it look nice. It's got a speaker there too. Um, yeah, this D-pad's, it's not clicky enough really. It feels kind of mushy. Like it's really mushy. Like I really like the uh, Xbox D-pad because it's got this recess for your thumb to sit in and it's very clicky whereas Zero click here. These buttons feel very small. Uh, they're at least level with each other. Not much throw. 
We're going to see anyway. Uh, I'm not expecting much from this. As I said, I don't think... I think people that have watched a lot of these videos of these types of devices will recognise the menu that's going to come up. And I don't expect much from it. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you get this menu with this Mario background. And you get your 501 games. Um... It's all these usual things. Super Bear Bros is pretty famous for being in this. Um, but yeah, it's all usual stuff. And they're all NES games. So that's why it's kind of weird that this is here. And I think it's just to make it look like the new like Ambernet controllers and stuff. But yeah, I don't know what some of these games are. I think it yeah, just becomes garbage at some point made up. So anyway, I did notice a football game in this list, so we are going to try that. And I noticed Toy Story, which I'm curious what Toy Story is, because I don't think there's a Toy Story in the NES. But yeah, you've got things like Excite Bike, F1 Race is a pretty good game. Tetris 2 is pretty good. Yeah, I noticed this. Uh, Hot Blood Soccer. I have a feeling, yeah, this is just World Cup. This is Nintendo World Cup soccer. Uh, so you only control one player, and you can get them to pass to you, you can get them to shoot. Oh, the ball disappeared. There we go, one nil. But yeah, so this is an NES game, um, just in Japanese, I guess, and then it's got a different name. So yeah, you can hit reset, you can't save any of these games by the looks of things. Uh, the volume's quite uh, loud. And it's on the highest, so we're going to check out... Uh, Monkey Kong Junior Math, good game if you're into your maths. Let's check out Toy Story. Wait, this is Bomberman. It's a hundred percent single player Bomberman. I will say, um, the camera kind of makes things look a little bit more blown out than they are. The screen is, its viewing angle is terrible. If you're not viewing it straight on, um, it's really bad. You've got to be completely straight on, some sort of door here or something. Otherwise, you just lose anything resembling the right, the true colours. Okay, let's reset again. Let's try Contra 24 in 1. Oh, so it sends us to another menu of different Contras. Let me click on one of these. So this is Contra. Oh, it's different stages. Ah, the deep I got caught a bit there. I did not mean to stand up quite then. Oh. Oh, bad jump. Game over. Okay. Okay. 
Presumably, Super Bear Bros is Super Mario Bros, yeah. Hmm. The uh, jump doesn't exactly feel responsive, it's very blurry. Yeah. I'm pressing jump here. This is very uncomfortable to hold as well. Oh, there's a, um, a bit of screen tearing there as well that I'm noticing oh, quite a lot actually. Just something a lot of these smaller, cheaper devices always seem to have. Yeah, that pole looked terrible because of the screen tearing. Um, yeah, I can't get over how bad this viewing angle is. This is the same camera I've used to capture Steam Deck stuff reasonably well. And it just looks terrible. Chippendale 1. Chippendale's been in the news recently because a new movie came out. See, it's weird. The, these buttons have little function except for the uh, L button is select, but only because they chose to put the volume button here. Um, so you kind of don't understand why they made that decision. Um, it's just to make it look like these other consoles. So I am going to try out this gamepad. And we'll see what that's like. So it plugs into here. And then presumably you can just use it. Um, interestingly, it doesn't have the shoulder buttons because there's no use for them because you've got a select button on here. Except for, doesn't seem to be working. Hmm. Let's see if it will work now. I think you can possibly only use it as a second player. It does not seem to want to work. There's no on switch on it or anything. Um, so yeah. Weird thing is you've got a black console but then a see-through controller. And it kind of feels exactly the same. Mushy here and these buttons. They like, they feel... They like too close together really. And they just don't feel great. Um, and then yeah, it's got this weird... These nubs kind of stop you from just holding it like this because it's uncomfortable. So you're naturally going to hold it like this, but there's nothing here. Very odd. Uh, so yeah, so in terms of how much this device costs, you can get it for about... Uh, it's like 20 bucks on like Amazon and stuff, but then you can get it even cheaper from the likes of AliExpress for like $11. It is... It's kind of hard to recommend, like you'll have seen, this menu is very familiar to anybody that's bought one of those like knockoff NES's or there's those weird consoles that look like PS4's or even PS5's and they're just, um, they're not, it's this, but yeah, so it's a mixture of, I guess, official Nintendo games with slightly renamed and then just a whole bunch of knockoff games. Or games that are like reskins of stuff. Dig Dug's a pretty good game. <coughs> but yeah. It's kind of hard to recommend. The screen is...
terrible. It feels like the controls are kind of unresponsive. Uh, yeah, this, well, this is struggling to play actually because it's like stop, start, stop, start. And yeah, I'm finding, not quite getting what I want out of the controls. Ah, damn it. Okay, escape. Big Dog's cool. Um, but this is not the best way to play it. Uh, so yeah, even for eleven dollars, I kind of find myself struggling to recommend this device. I think you could spend a little bit more money and get something a little bit better. Like there's a few Pal Kitty handhelds that are quite cheap. Um, there's uh, there's the old Bit Boy. There's the Pocket Go that I actually have, uh, but that does have screen tearing issues as well. But yeah, you're really limited in the fact that you can't save any of these games and a lot of them are trash. And then so the device itself is kind of pointless. They went to the extra effort to make this rib backdrop thing. This feels like this is purely to sell people a new model and be like, hey, yep, we're like the Amber Neck devices and all those the vertical handhelds with shoulder buttons or like power kiddies and stuff. Um, it is slim, I'll give them that. And it kind of... It's okay to hold, um, but yeah, the screen tearing, the bad screen, you have to look at the screen straight on. Um, it's just really not a good device, and then the fact that this can't double up, it doesn't seem as a player one controller, or at least mine's not working, so perhaps it's faulty. It doesn't really sell itself to... Uh, it being any good, and I'm not even going to try this thing out because I cannot be bothered to mess about on my TV trying to plug this in. It's all in all a disappointing device, but people that have bought SUP handhelds before or other things rebadged as this probably would know what to expect, and that's it. Uh, so yeah, thanks very much for watching. Do have some more handheld videos coming up of some better devices, so be sure to check back later. Thanks for watching. Bye.